So my talk is titled, When I See His Work, My Soul is Taken to a World of Stars. Blake is an influence on manga. The modern history of Japan includes tension between traditional and innovation, which derives from Japan's rich heritage of national and ethnic identity and the rapid modernization and industrialization that occurred in the wake of Western influence. Manga as an art form also carries a tension between the visual and verbal forms, particularly for a high context culture that heavily depends on nonverbal cues as well as verbal ones. During the tumultuous time of the Meiji Restoration and the Taisho period from the 1860s to 1932, young artists and writers like those involved with the magazine Shirakaba wrestled with the seismic changes in Japan. It is also during this history, uh, during this period, that manga arguably developed into its modern recognizable form. William Blake was among the Western artists that who impacted this era of literate and artistic progressives. I argue that Blake's multimodal texts influenced in part the art of this era that helped produce manga. Furthermore, his radical challenges to historical tradition and extreme devotion to his individual imaginative vision inspired artists to experiment and to negotiate between Japanese identity and Western modernity. In my talk, I will first sketch an overview of the history of manga in terms of Japanese and Western influences. Then I will cover the impact of Blake on the Shirakawa group's artists and writers, after which I will discuss the possible reasons Blake's works might have resonated with these writers, as well as possibly influence its verbal visual discourse. Blake and his radical individualism and expressive multimodality impacted the modern Japanese artistic and philosophical movement from which manga emerges. So first, a history of the um, Japanese visual storytelling. Japanese heritage of visual storytelling dates back centuries, the most famous of which appear in the 12th to 13th centuries of Choju Gija. And I do apologize if I am making a hash of these pronunciations here. I'll, I'll try to do my best. Uh, Mark Wang explains that the Choju Giga animal caricatures are four small scrolls containing cartoons that depict animals in anthropomorphic positions, also known as Choju Jinbutsu Gija. These uh, famous scrolls depict tableaus like a thieving monkey fleeing his victims and various animals in a sumo wrestling contest. This is the image you see on the, on the screen here. The images convey what Kinko Ito terms, quote, the decadent lifestyles of the upper class, end quote, suggesting that they involve both a subtle class critique as well as a mass appeal to lower class disenfranchised audiences, typically ignored as illiterate and ignorant. From the outset, visual narratives in Japan promoted awareness of social dynamics that illustrate issues like inequality and decadence. The second major advancement toward manga features the yukai-e, a popular form of woodblock printing art from the 17th through the 19th centuries. Yukai-e translates to pictures of the floating world. These images featured celebrities like sumo wrestlers, actors, famous beauties, as well as landscapes, birds, and historical themes. The most renowned artist in this style was Hokusai Katsushika, creator of the series The 36 Sceneries of Mount Fuji, and whose work, The Great Wave of Kanagawa, remain famous to this day. This is the image we see on the screen. Uh, Hokusai is also credited with coining the term manga, a derivation of kanji, or man, translated as whimsical or impromptu, and ga are pictures. So manga literally translates to whimsical pictures or impromptu pictures. Uh, the two images on the next slide here from Utagawa Kuniyoshi uh, are examples of yukai You'll notice the date for the image on the right here is 1830. So this is during the 19th century. Um, and these two images, uh, just the dynamic action in these images coupled with text creates an explosiveness that would influence later developments in manga. These two ancient forms of visual storytelling paint a compelling picture for the origins of manga as a Japanese art form. In contrast to the argument that manga's origins lie in the strictly Japanese tradition of visual storytelling, another stream of thought traces manga's origins from Western influences during the Meiji Restoration. The forced termination of Japanese isolation 
1854 and the end of the Tokugawa shogunate in 1868 led to the Meiji Restoration and an influx of Western influences, among them cartoons from British Britain and America. Matsushima Masato, curator of Japanese painting at the Tokyo National Museum, claims that, quote, manga found in Japan are a medium that developed after being introduced from the West and widely permeating Japanese society from the Meiji period onwards. Primary among the Western influences is the magazine Punch in England that ran for over 150 years. In 1868, Quote, foreign resident of Yokohama and staff artist for the London Illustrated News, Charles Wordman, founded the Japan Punch, Japan's first graphic humor magazine, end quote, from Charles Exner. Along with Frenchman Georges Bijot's Tobai, uh, Wordman introduced Jap Japanese art audiences to sequential and diagenetic narrative, uh, to the sequential and diagenetic narrative of modern comic strips, as well as word balloons. Bijou focused both on the elite and common folk in Japanese society. Here we see the cover of the 1873 issue of Japan's Punch. Uh, and then on the next page here, this is by Bijou. This is Verité Japonaise. And here we see a fairly uh, recognizable instance of a what we would consider a modern day comic strip um, that is also trying to um, depict some instances of Japanese culture and society. In the wake of Wordman and Bijou, Japanese artists began to produce visual narrative texts. The two artists most responsible for popularizing this form during the Meiji and Taisho periods were Kitazawa Rakuten and Ipe Oka Okamoto. These two artists pioneered early forms of manga in keeping with the rapidly shifting cultural tide of industrialization and modernization. The loosening of cultural and national traditions allowed for critiques of both Western and Japanese institutions. Ito locates social satire as a key element in manga, especially in the Meiji period, that derived inspiration from European thinkers such as Jean-Jacques Rousseau and the liberal British philosophers. Wang connects manga with Marxist movements. Manga artist Shimokawa Bokotan thought that manga, as a medium of the populace, had a strong relationship with revolution. This political upheaval ended in a crackdown on free speech and expression in 1932, after the Japanese prime minister was assassinated, and the ultra-nationalist party took control uh, on through the Second World War. So here we see uh, uh, Kitazawa's cover of Tokyo Puck, uh, another graphic humor um, magazine from the Meiji and Taisho period. And on the next page here, we actually see an example of Kitazawa's domestic commentary. I really like this image because it's almost like a Mobius strip here in a circular clockwise motion where we see a wife who's been frust who's frustrated with her husband's laziness. Uh, she kicks him out. Uh, she sort of lays, uh, draws a line in the sand. Uh, we see him looking regretfully back towards her. She now regrets her decision, uh, their reunion, and then now we see her back at her industrious job in contrast with his laziness. But unfortunately, the implication here is that this is a cycle that will continue to perpetuate uh, indefinitely less, unless something changes, right? Um, so, Blake and the Shirakawa Group. A primary source for disseminating and popularizing Western artists in Japan in the 1910s was the magazine Shirakawa, which consisted of artists, writers, and critics who rejected Confucianism and the strictures of traditional Japanese literary and artistic styles. Yumikoto Goto uh, observes that Shirakawa had a large influence on young artists and fueled their yearning for Europe. They admired and imitated the works of Auguste Rodin, Paul Cézanne, and Vincent van Gogh as they grew familiar with them through Shirakawa and tried to emulate these great masters not only in their artworks but also in their lives. Here we see the cover of Shirakawa from a later issue from 1910, um, very clearly uh, celebrating Auguste Rodin. Uh, Blake's importance in this movement emerges in the regularity with which he appeared in Shirakawa. Goto includes a graph of the various artists' frequency of appearance in the pages and covers of the magazine, as you see here. Blake is third from the last year with only 41 appearances, but this is still quite a number of appearances 
in a fairly short amount of time. Uh, and, and this testifies to the impact that he had, an, an impact that will only uh, deepen as the years go by. Um, initially, his impact on Japanese art lay in his poetry, but during the early Taisho period, however, Blake came to be known for his visual works. In other words, interest in Blake in these decades mainly developed through images rather than through translations as in the Meiji uh, preceding period. That was Goto's quote. A cover of Shirakaba designed by engraver and artist Bernard Leach ran in 1913, as we see here. Uh, so he took this was along with a section from the Tiger poem uh, and put it into Blakeian style uh, for the front cover of Shirakaba here, as we see uh, volume four, number one. Um, <clears throat> Uh, cover uh, the following year, the fifth anniversary edition of Shirakawa featured an article on Blake by Soetsu Yanagi, who expanded this article eventually into the first book in Japanese entirely devoted to Blake. Uh, an exhibition of Western artwork in 1915 was billed the seventh art uh, exhibition and Blake exhibition in Shirakawa. So in the pages of Shirakawa, this is actually how they uh, publicized it, which featured around 60 reproductions of Blake's works. And finally, in 1919, a fundraiser to establish a museum dedicated to Western art was held titled Exhibition of Reproductions from the Works of William Blake for the establishment of the Shirakawa Art Museum. So in thinking about how to popularize and publicize Western art in Japan during this time, Blake seems to become increasingly um, not synonymous with it, but certainly an important figure in creating this mass appeal and trying to um, tout uh, Western influences and art styles. As Goto noted, Blake's main impact on the Taisho period's intellectual and artistic radicals owed more to Blake's images than to his poetry. Sanyatsu Mushano, Mushano Koji, a leader of the Shirakawa group, expressed his deep admiration, quote, I can easily tell you the English painter whom I respect the most, Blake. He is the deepest, strongest, and most creative. I believe that he is a person that we should truly respect. He is one of a kind. Blake will always be my favorite, and I believe that he is the most admirable artist and person." End quote. Um, so Blake's influence, his radical individualism and expressiveness. Part of Blake's appeal to this group of radical artists fascinated with Western ideals and art lies in his own marriage of artistic form with imaginative individuality. In his multimodal works, Blake challenged conventions that segregated the written and verbal forms from visual forms in addition to the political, religious, and social critiques he offered. Blake's first appeal for Japanese literati and artists em emanated from his individualistic exuberance and expressiveness. Compare the following images. The first is a pencil sketch for the cover of Tokyo Puck, we saw that magazine earlier, by Harue Koga, a Western style cubist and surrealist painter. Um, so in looking at this, perhaps you may have noted, especially the woman's posture here, is rather similar to that which we see Blake in a self-portrait in the pages of Milton here, um, where we see Milton's spirit descend from heaven into Blake's left foot. The ecstatic expressiveness seems to have resonated strongly with Koga, even though his reappropriation of Blake's posture radically alters the context. The name of this painting is A Smiling Robot. Um, Koga appears to be depicting a woman having her foot massaged by a smiling robot in the finished work. This surrealistic juxtaposition may seem at odds with Blake's original, but in both cases, the focus of the image lingers on deep human emotion, perhaps even euphoria, that overwhelms contemplative and rational behavior. Blake's ability and determination to express individual experiences that transcend rational abilities profoundly impacted Japanese artists of this era. As another artist, Yoshiro Nagayo, exclaims, Quote, Blake's mystical, be uh, mystical beauty is special. He apparently did not use oils, but the depth of his painting is limitless. He was a genius who should be ranked among the greatest of people for the unusual beauty and depth born from his very remarkable character. He shines like a comet in Hades. When I see his work, my soul is taken to a world of stars, end quote. 
Nagayo's um, own ecstatic words testify to the ineffable nature of Blake's works that reflect his very remarkable character, while also transporting viewers through his transcendent creativity. The expressiveness of Blake's works relates to the importance of nonverbal communication and cues that became important in manga. Kinko Ito builds upon the high context communication theory in explaining that J Japanese prefer uh, Japanese, quote, prefer to use more implicit, unclear, and ambiguous messages whose meanings are found in the context rather than explicit, clear, and straightforward messages. This high context communication, quote, depends more on visual and auditory cues, end quote. Manga relies more on visual cues like exaggerated facial expressions, diagenetic elements like dust clouds to convey speed, and so forth than on written content. For Japanese artists in a high context society who were discovering individualistic art and expressiveness, Blake's designs with their evocative power and obscure meanings would be a template for the developing art form of manga. Here we see a, a fairly traditional panel from an art, uh, from a manga uh, volume here with very expressive facial, ex uh, facial features here and co compare this again with uh, an, an example of Blake's own works. <clears throat> so, um, Blake's ability to acknowledge and also reimagine traditional beliefs, institutions, and practices reflects, reflects the productive tension that exists between two opposing forces or contraries. As he proclaims in The Marriage of Heaven and Hell, without contraries is no progression. One of Blake's lasting legacies in Japan emerges in his dedication to this individualistic imagination in the face of social pressure, maintaining individuality amidst conformity. <clears throat> Blake's determination to impose his vision onto the world and create a counter mythology to the dominant narratives and institutions of his day mirrors some of the Shirakawa artists as well as the post-war generation of Japanese artists and writers who would forge a new national and cultural identity from the ruins of World War II. Kenzaburo Oe, the 1994 winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature, cited the ambivalence of Japan and the Japanese in his Nobel speech, grappling with its history and rapid modernization. Oe cited Blake as a major influence on his work and thinking, quote, what attracts me to Blake so powerfully is that he not only formulates his own uniquely mythological world based on a tradition that extends from Christianity to esoteric mysticism, he also empowers this mythology to develop on its own by infusing it with energy from his life and times, end quote. Forging one's individual and cultural identity out of the opposing forces of tradition and modernity became critical for Japanese artists and writers in the 20th century. And Blake's fascination with contrariety in art and life provide an example for writers and artists like Oe. At the intersection of tradition and modernization, manga presents an experiment in moving forward while maintaining contact with the past. For the artists and writers of the 20th century who sought to navigate contrary forces of cultural heritage and modernity, William Blake's exuberant individualism and multimodal unconventionality provided a spark of inspiration to experiment and create a path into the future. Thank you very much for your attention and a special thanks to Sybil and Jason for organizing this wonderful conference. And if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, you can certainly send those along my way now or send me an email um, at my current place of employment to the University of Central Oklahoma. Thank you very much.